Hello and welcome to another episode of my Dats and 2DZ Project Car Build. I'm Dave, this is Grindhouse Performance Engineering, and in today's episode, I'm gonna be covering everything I need to do to be able to measure the custom wheels for the car. Stay tuned. So unfortunately today's episode does start with a little bit of bad news. I've been spending a lot of time recently trying to really fine tune my to-do list to have this car finished for SEMA this year and I'm sure many of you have heard that the organizers have had to cancel the event this year due to COVID-19. SEMA's always been a bucket list for me. I've always wanted to bring a car to SEMA and so I was pretty bummed to find out the event was canceled even though um, this... <laughs> This probably wouldn't get done in time in all seriousness, so um, But there's always next year and there's always future builds. So for tire sizes on the car I went with a 275 4017 for the front and a 315 35 17 for the rear I went with this style because it's gonna give a nice sidewall I don't like the really really like low profile tires, especially on an old Datsun like this I don't think it would look quite right this is gonna have a nice chunky factor to it, which is a real professional racing term. One of the benefits of having the tires before ordering the wheels is you can actually get a tool like this one. This is a, a wheel fitment tool that you can actually bolt to the hub, adjust the offset, move the tire in and out, articulate the suspension, turn the wheel, do whatever it is you would do as though you had the wheel um, before you've committed to a certain size. A couple other things you might need that are gonna come in handy are straight edge, uh, framing square, uh, tape measure, of course, and then uh, whatever this guy's called, which I'll include a link to the description of because this is actually really handy as well. He's trying to have a channel teaching people and doesn't even know what the tools are called. Jeez. <laughs> The measurements I'm taking need to be taken at ride height. I've removed the sway bar and completely loosened the coilover so I can jack up the corners without loading the suspension. One thing I quickly wanted to point out before we continue is a note about wheel widths. So how wide is a wheel here? Uh, most folks, you know, really quickly thinking would go, okay, you know, I'm gonna measure from the outside here to the outside here and this is gonna give me my wheel width. For this particular wheel, unless the tape measure is upside down, which it is for you guys, and I realize that now, um, this is seven and a half inches. However, this is a six and a half inch wide wheel. Why is that? Okay, much like a two by four is actually a one and a half by three and a half, they're trying to screw with you. So the wheel width is actually measured from the inside of this lip to the inside of this lip, not from the outside to the outside. And so there's usually about an inch discrepancy between how wide a wheel is actually measured to be versus how wide a wheel is when you buy it. The main things that you really wanna figure out are how much clearance you have inboard, how much clearance you have outboard, how much clearance you need for the brakes, and how much clearance you need for the hubs. Because of how large this hub is, it's pretty difficult to get an accurate dimension of the diameter of this. With the studs in the way and with the height of this, it's just kind of a pain in the neck. So I found that this put over, over the hub like this, and then you can, you can dial this down and get this to the point where it's just barely clearing. That's gonna give you that distance between that is the diameter of the hub so that the center bore of the wheel that we have made is gonna be able to fit nice and snugly on that bore. To measure the protrusion of the hub, I'm just gonna put a straight edge against the hub and then I'm gonna take a tape measure and I'm just gonna push it right against the actual uh, mating surface of the wheel. So we'll just do that and then that and that's gonna give us our protrusion of the hub so that when we have a center cap made for it, they'll, the wheel manufacturer is gonna know how big that center cap needs to be. The next thing I wanna measure is the actual protrusion of the brake caliper. Um, the reason you wanna measure this is every wheel's gonna have a certain concavity to it, so the, the wheel's gonna have a certain profile. And if you don't specify exactly what the protrusion, which is how far out this caliper sticks, you might find that you won't be able to get the wheel all the way seated because the spokes are actually gonna start hitting the caliper here. So to measure the protrusion of the caliper, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the hub. We're gonna take that straight edge, 
And we're just gonna put it flat against the caliper, take a tape measure and make a measurement. I'm gonna do this in a few different spots here, trying to keep the straight edge as flat as possible. The caliper is pretty flat, but it's still a good idea to just check in a couple different locations and then just pick, you know, the worst case of any of the measurements that you took as your protrusion of the brake caliper. The next thing that I'm gonna measure is the actual brake diameter. Since I know that a 17 inch wheel is going to clear these brakes no problem, this is kind of, you know, just for you guys. But if you have something that's gonna fit a little bit tighter and you just wanna see, um, using the framing square, you can go back in and, and basically from from the center, you can see there's a machining mark right in the center of the hub in this one. Otherwise, you'll have to measure and actually mark the center. And then basically take the framing square and wherever that winds up just having clearance to the caliper from here to here, this distance is going to be the brake radius. Multiply that by two, that gives you your brake diameter. And then if you move that through the stroke, put it at the top, near the top, see where it clears, and put it at the bottom, see where it clears. Offsets are one of the most confusing and misunderstood pieces of buying custom wheels. I've included a quick explanation at the end of the video that helps simplify how to measure it. of adjusting with the offset tool to come up with the size where I'm really happy with it. And I think this is about as aggressive as I want to go. It is, still, it, there's only about one finger's worth of gap here between the tire and, and the edge here. So it is really tight, um, but we're starting to run into some other clearance concerns that I'll show you here. Turn the wheel here. You can see this is going to be the piece of fiberglass where the headlight bucket rests against. And when I actually install the headlight bucket there, it gets really close there. And then also, if I turn this again, this piece here of metal is getting really close to the tire if I do anything more to increase the scrub radius. So I think this is about as aggressive as I can get. Um, I am going to have to trim this fender here. This tire is a little bit taller than this fender was ever really designed for. And if you look, I mean, there's... There's a whole lot of tire sticking out there. So I think most people wind up having to trim that fender in that area, or I've done something horribly wrong. Please let me know if I've done something horribly wrong um, before we have the video of me chopping these to pieces. I'm repeating the clearance measurements on both sides of the car to make sure I know the worst clearance concerns. Moving on to the back, I'm repeating the same measurements for the hub diameter, hub protrusion, brake diameter, and brake protrusion, making sure to include clearances required for fitting the parking brake cables. set the ride height of the car, we found out the rear wheel arches needed to be trimmed. I'm hesitant to do any cutting until I have the actual wheels for the car here, but it's making the wheel offset measurements much more challenging to do. So after an uncomfortable amount of back and forth, I feel like we've settled on a pretty ridiculously cool wheel fitment for the car. Uh, so the rear, keep in mind, we're still gonna have to take some off 
of the of the arch here um, so we're gonna have to take probably about two inches so what I did here is I took the camber and I overemphasized it just so that it would tuck and then I jacked it up to what would be ride height with a little bit of extra camber to kind of give me an idea of how you know far in and out the wheel is actually gonna sit. I have to quickly point this out. When you get this deep in a project like this, it's really easy to forget like where you started. And this <laughs> is the original wheel and tire off the car. And this <laughs> is what we're moving to. It's <laughs> this is significant. This tire was made in 1979 and I drove on these for months. Oh my God. <laughs> So if we know that a nine and a half inch wheel is actually 10 and a half inches wide, we know that the center point of a 10 and a half inch wide wheel is five and a quarter. This would be the point that a zero offset wheel would be if, if you had a zero offset wheel. Um, that's where the flange would be. Uh, it's also the center of the wheel. We know from using the wheel fit tool that we actually are gonna have a backspacing of two and three quarter inches. So that means that this is where we know the mounting flange needs to be. So if we know that this is the backspacing that we need, calculating offset is really as simple as just measuring the distance between these two points. And the distance between these two points is two and a half inches, which is around uh, negative 63 millimeters. And it's negative because we're going this way. That makes it a negative offset. If we were going this way, this would be a positive offset. I think the frustrating part of this is going through all these steps and knowing that I'm gonna still have to modify all four corners of the fiberglass bodywork to fit the wheels when they do come in. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to just like slam them in and drop the car down and be happy with it. Like it's gonna still take a lot of trimming and, and, and fitment to get everything to sit just the way that I want. Um, but that's okay. And you know what, that's a problem for future Dave and we're all about future Dave problems on this channel. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.